Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Saturday, December the 3rd. And in the previous uh, videos, I was looking at uh, OFDM uh, for HF messaging, uh, for HF radio. So in this particular uh, video, I want to consider FEC or forward error correction. So <clears throat> I'm just looking at the, the blog post here. So here's a model of, let's say, uh, an HF channel. So let's say we're using um, a modulation scheme such as BPSK. That's uh, keyboard to keyboard. So basically on the transmit end, if you, if you uh, send a character like a letter or a number and it goes to the other end, it might be received correctly or it might be interpreted incorrectly if there's a noise pulse there screwing up some of the bits. So it'll just print out as it's decoded. So let's say you send an A, there's an error, and it turns out to be a B. So you just have to live with it. But if you're using HF email, then you want to make sure that your characters are received correctly. So generally what happens is you use uh, error detection and error correction. So let's say we have some data here that we want to send. We're going to add some bits here for the forward error correction, FEC. We're also going to add some bits for what we call the error detection, or typically they use a CRC, which is a cyclic redundancy check. So the CRC will tell you whether you've made an error, and the FEC uh, will correct errors that are made up to a certain point. <clears throat> so let's say, for instance, here we have a data frame with the FEC and the CRC it's sent, and there are no errors. Well, at the far end, on the receive end, uh, an ACK is sent back to the transmitter saying that frame was received correctly, so send the next frame. So we just proceed on like that, if everything's working well. If there is an error, here there's an error detected by the CRC, but it's, it's able to be corrected. So we still send an ACK back to the other end. And finally, in the last case, errors are made, but they're not able to be corrected. So then what we do is we send a NAC, an uh, automatic repeat request, uh, to the transmit. And in other words, we didn't receive that frame correctly, please send it again. So that's kind of the uh, idea there. So <clears throat> here's a simple, um, this is an old uh, Simulink model from way back when, when I was looking at this. And what I did is a static model. So I'm just using a simple CRC generator and a CRC decoder. And I'm using a, a random number generator, a PN sequence generator. So it uh, generate 16 bits or two bytes and the CRC in this case is a small one it's a CRC 4 so it only adds an extra four bits typically you use CRC 16 or 32 so you um, add those bits you transmit it into the channel and this is the channel vector so it's a static vector and so you can pick which bits you want to make an error in so here uh, there's no errors so that's XORed with the transmit code word and so nothing's detected, so what we receive is what we sent. In this particular case down here, um, there's my data being sent, my two bytes being sent, the CRC is added, and here we're making an error here in the first bit and the last bit. So you can see here in the syndrome detector, it's detecting an error. So what we receive then, um, is not the same as what we transmitted because errors were made, but we were able to detect that an error was made. So this, yeah, that's the idea of CRC. And then down here, uh, this is another uh, older Simulink model. This is demonstrating um, forward error correction. So we have a BCH code, a 15.5 code. So you take um, information bits, let's say five bits. Now we're adding 10 extra bits. That's a hefty amount here. So 10 extra bits are added to uh, the original information bits. And again, we have a channel error. And we can see here in the channel error that we've got a couple of errors. So three errors, there, there's an error there, there's an error there, and there's one there. Um, and you can see here that uh, three errors were corrected. So what we sent is what we received. Now you can overdo it and go beyond the capability of the error correcting code. So here we've made four errors and you can see that what we received is not what we sent. So these codes have a limit to, to how many errors they correct. And you know they're designed to, to combat certain types of errors that could be random errors or burst errors or whatever. So these, there's a whole science between uh, uh, about picking these codes.
So here's a diagram showing you how you would measure bit error. So let's say we have a data signal coming in here. There's, let's say, a pseudo-random data signal coming in. So we're going into a baseband channel. We're going to add noise. So there's the noise sitting on top of the data. So typically, let's say, depending on how you build your receiver, if you sample in the middle of the bit and there's a noise pulse pushing you down between halfway uh, on the amplitude, then you'll make a mistake. And conversely, if you're at a zero and there's a noise pulse pushing you up beyond half the amplitude, you'll make a mistake. So here's, um, these are two curves. These are two theoretical curves for BPSK uh, in terms of what the signal to noise ratio is down here and what kind of errors you're gonna receive there. So as you increase the noise, you're gonna make more errors. Now, here's a very useful uh, circuit on GNU radio to illustrate that. So let's go to uh, GNU radio. So there's the model on GNU radio. So we've got a random source here. It works from zero to two. When it says zero to two, that means you'll get a number somewhere between zero and one. If you had zero, three, then you would have a possibility of zero, one, or two. So we're getting either zeros or ones here. And over here, there's a map block converting the zero to a minus one and the one to a one. So that gives you the BPSK. So it's minus one, one. So it's a bipolar signal. And there's my noise that I'm adding here. And you can adjust. The amplitude is actually the standard deviation of the noise. So let's just run this. <clears throat> so here's the noise and I've got a slider here for the noise standard deviation and there's the um, uh, random data signal the noise goes from minus one to one and as I crank up the noise here you'll see the bit error rate down at the bottom there So at 0.275 standard deviation, we're starting to get around 10 to the minus 5 uh, bit error rate. So that's a very useful model to show you how uh, you can measure the bit error rate. Now, there's another model here. Let's just go back to the blog post. If you um, measure the BER, if you take the standard deviation, and you say that the signal to noise ratio is basically the uh, voltage, the data signal voltage, let's say one volt over the standard deviation, and you square that, and you take 10 log of that, well, that'll give you a signal to noise ratio. And this is in a quick measurement, this is the BER I got. When you're measuring a small BER, like 10 to the minus six, the sample rate is one mega sample per second. So you need a couple of seconds to get to see an error. So you have to adjust the sampling time, or sorry, you have to adjust the, uh, on the GUI sync, you have to adjust the time, the, the measurement time, to make sure that you would see enough bit errors to get a good reading there. So these are the SNRs based on this standard deviation. And this is a theory, so you can see that this is fairly close to the uh, theor theoretical values. They're off by about a dB or so. Now, uh, there's an excellent reference there, reference five, and the gentleman who gave the talk there um, described in GNU radio how you build the particular um, FEC codex. Remember when we were looking at the um, uh, FEC up here, it was a static model. So in GNU, it's designed to work with actual data signals that are actually moving data or streaming data. So what they do is they kind of abstract the process so for instance, you have a configurator block, then you have an encoder definition, and then you have the extended encoder. So you, there's, there's multiple blocks there when you're building a particular FEC type of uh, coding scheme. So what's, um, what's very useful then for GNU radio, if you look at the examples, so for instance, let's say you have GNU radio 3.8. If you go into the um, 
directory where it's installed and you look under share, I think it's share, let's see, I've got it here. Um, share GNU radio examples, FEC, there's a whole bunch of examples there. And there's one particular example called Polar Code. So it's a complete codec. And it just kind of shows you the principle of um, the coded versus the uncoded transmission. Now remember when you're using the forward error correction code, you're adding more bits to what you have to transmit. So you have to weigh that off in terms of what is your throughput. In other words, how many uh, ARQs am I going to get um, versus how many bits are getting there correctly. So it's kind of a trade-off. You have to think about it. It's not, uh, it's not so straightforward. So here's the model then from the example, fairly complicated. And when we run it, let's just see what happens when we run it. So there we go. There's the coded. That's the data being sent um, with the uh, polar code. Uh, typically in OFDM, uh, you're going to use uh, Reed Solomon codes. Unfortunately, there wasn't an example for Reed Solomon. But anyways, this just illustrates what's going on. So there's the coded version, and there's the uncoded. So let's uh, crank up the uh, noise voltage here and see what happens. Okay, so there we're starting to take errors on the uncoded data. So we're getting a bit error rate of 10 to the minus 4. And note here that we're not making any errors at all. Though. So that just shows you the advantage of using the forward error correction.